I got a lot of feedback after last week's video about typewriter text, so I wanted to present a couple of alternative ways to do the same thing, and show how you can also synchronise the effect to sound. So that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends, and welcome to another look at typewriter text, answering the questions I've had since last week's video. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren, and on this channel I release new OpenTunes tutorials, news videos, and animations weekly. So subscribe to not miss them, and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenTunes, check out my other videos on this channel, including plenty of beginner tutorials. So, on to today's video. And today's video will contain a small project to answer each question from the intro. And there's a link to each of them in the description, so you can jump to the section you're interested in. And stick around to the end, where I'll show what I did to set up the intro. Synchronising to sound effects. So last week's method, although manual, allows accurate synchronisation of the text with sound. So I'll just set up the text column first. And as I showed last week, you just press the D key to create a duplicate drawing, one for each letter that you're going to show on screen, and then you go to each drawing and delete one letter less than you had previously so that when you play through the drawings, it appears that one extra letter is appearing on screen each drawing. So now I've got the drawing set up, I just downloaded a typewriter sound effect, and I did this from freesound.org, which is a great website for downloading sound effects from. Then you just drag the sound effect into OpenTunes, and it'll ask you if you want to import or load the effect. Choosing load, we use the effect from the original location, so if you make a change to the effect in this folder, that'll be used in your project. But if you choose import, it'll take a copy and put it in with the project, so you've got a local copy that you can use independently of this original download. And also that means you can zip up your entire OpenTunes project folder and you'll have all of the assets that you need, so we'll choose import. And you'll see that the effect is added in its own column, and the waveform is shown from the last frame we used working on, which was 27. So I'll just drag this towards the top, and you can drag them around as you would any set of drawing frames. And I won't go fully into editing sound in OpenTunes in this video, but you can hear the sound here, by clicking on this speaker icon at the top of the column, or by clicking and dragging down the right hand side of the frames. And because the sound is broken up into frames, you can actually click and delete individual frames, or move around the frames into any order. And because the original audio took up 5 frames, which is quite a long sound, I'll also delete this first frame, and take another listen, and that's fine. And again to make it shorter, I'll take away this other last frame. And you've still got the main part of the sound. So let's place these two starting at frame 7, bring down the pictures here, and because the audio lasts two frames, if we space out all of the drawings on twos, that means we can just copy these two frames next to each drawing. So we highlight them, press Ctrl C to copy, move down and press Ctrl V to paste. And because the click happens partly through the first drawing, I'll actually move the drawings down one frame, so the letter appears after you hear the sound. And obviously if you've got the full audio track of the typing sounds for the whole sentence, you'll see the whole waveform in the column, and then you can just align the drawings to match that waveform. So let's take a listen. And before you press play, make sure you press this button here to turn on the audio. And the first thing you notice is that only the first click is played, and this often happens when you start a new project. And all you need to do is save all, and then reload the scene. And now when we play, you get to hear all the sounds. Now that went by far too quickly, sounding more like a machine gun, and you want to add an extra click to add spaces between the letters, even though there's no picture to match. So I'll just re-space that out. Good, so I'll space that out, and you'll notice that I've added a few extra spaces so that the sound isn't quite so even. Let's take a listen. Good, so that's how you can synchronise the showing of text with audio. The next method was shown to me by Beermuth on the Discord channel, as a way to delete the letters quicker in a less manual way. And provided you don't need to time out the text, this is a great way to give the same effect in a much shorter time. 
and it involves using two parts of the erase tool that you might not have used before. So here you can see I've added the text on one frame. Then as before, duplicate this drawing. But this time, instead of adding a drawing for each letter, just consider how long you want the effect to take, and then duplicate the drawings to last that time. So for this short title, I'll take two seconds. So we just duplicate it for 48 frames. Now remember, you duplicate the drawing, so in this instance I've got 48 separate drawings, I've not extended drawing number one over 48 frames. And that's important because we need separate drawings to show a separate range of letters. So to delete them, we use the Erase tool, we change the type from normal, which would just allow you to delete letters by stroking over them, to rectangular. And that allows you to draw a rectangle to delete more than one letter at once. But notice how you can only delete whole letters. You can't delete part of a letter. And that's really important and really useful for what we're trying to achieve today. And the second part of this is using the frame range option on the top toolbar. And this mode is available for all eraser types apart from normal. And by using these in combination, it allows you to draw a rectangle on the first frame to delete all of the letters. And then if you move to the last frame and draw a final rectangle that's smaller deleting none of the letters, the erase tool interpolates between those two rectangles, deleting more and more of the letters going from left to right. And doing it this way gives a very similar effect to it manually with the only differences being that the deletions are very evenly spaced and some frames might have two letters deleted if it's over a short period and others none if it's a longer period. So you'll see here how you can go across a number of drawings before a new letter is added. And finally we could also use a mat to reveal the letters one at a time. So again add the sentence. And on another layer, draw your mat. And this is just a shape that covers whatever you want to either show or hide. And in this case, I'll add a simple rectangle to hide the letters. And if your mat shows the letters, you use mat in. And if it hides them, we'll use a mat out effect. And you'll see that in a second. And we'll set it up as a mat on the FX schematic view, so it doesn't show itself on the output. So you might find the schematic in one of the rooms, or you can click on schematic in the Windows menu. So currently, this is showing the stage schematic. To show the FX schematic as we want to, you go to the bottom right and press this button. And to use a mat on the words, we'll right click on the words column, choose to insert the effects, go down to mat, and it's mat out. So the letters underneath the mat aren't visible. So you can see here the words column is plugged into the source, and that's the source image we want to show on screen. And we simply plug the mat into the mat column by dragging from one triangle to the other. So now when we choose to preview, we don't see any text at the minute because the text is fully covered up by the mat. And then as we move the mat rectangle out of the way, you'll start to see the letters. So let's close that. And again, we'll extend both these columns to the length of the reveal time. And then one more thing to set up, we need to change the default interpolation to be constant. And this makes it easier when setting up this kind of animation using the animate tool which means that the position won't change between keys so you can have the stepped look, however many frames there are in between. And I'll show you what this means in a second. So if you go to the file menu, down to your preferences, and then go to the animation section, and the default interpolation is set upon mine with speed in and speed out, and we just need to change it to constant. So if we turn off the preview, we can see the mat again, and then we'll just use the animate tool at the top left here, select that, We'll make sure we're set on to position, which we are. And because we're only moving the mat from left to right using the east-west positions, I'll lock the north-south option so that it will only move sideways. And now we'll just use the animation tool to move the mat to the right one letter each time. So we'll leave the first three frames showing nothing, and then making sure we're in the mat column, we'll go to frame four here, and then we just click and drag anywhere on the screen and the rectangle will move with your mouse pointer. So we'll reveal the letter U, We'll go down three frames, move it across, and then show the letter S. Before we go any further, you can see as you move down through the frames, there's no interpolation between each of the key places, and that's because we chose the constant interpolation. If we change to ease in and ease out, between four, five, six, and seven, there'd be interpolation, which means the rectangle will be seen slowly moving to the right. So I'll just add the rest of the positions for this mat.
And now if you want a longer animation, you can just extend this frame for as long as necessary. And in fact, I didn't add a key for the first frame of the mat to cover up the letter U. So I'll add one now, just by dragging that over there. So if I play it first in full preview, by pressing the preview button at the top right, you'll see it shows the same sort of effect. If I turn the preview off and take a look at it, you'll see what's happening behind the scenes. But the matte rectangle is simply moving to the right, revealing the letters. And finally, you'll often see the opposite revealing effect, where the text moves out from behind a mat, but still one letter at a time. And you set it up in the same way as before, so you can see here I've added the sentence in the centre of the page where I'd like it to move into, then I've drawn the mat to the right of that, and then all we need to do is apply the movement in the same way, but to the letters instead of the mat. So again we use the animate tool, and I've still got the default constant interpolation set. North and south is locked, so I can only move left to right. And then I just need to select the words column instead of the mat column. And on frame one, I put all of the words behind the mat. And again, moving three frames at a time, I just drag out the words in that column, revealing one letter at a time. Then move down three frames and reveal the next letter. So I'll just work through the rest of these letters, including adding extra frames for the spaces. Okay, so let's take a look at it first with the mat on screen. and then we'll show the full preview. And finally, let's take a quick look at how I set up the intro animation. So firstly we've got a basic background column, and that's a simple painting that when you apply a blur, just gives you a general background to sit behind the character. I've got the chap here made up of a few simple drawings that show the blink animation, and then further down, I've got the animation of his thumb moving, I've got a separate column where I've drawn the shadows. And they're simply overlaid onto the character using a mat so that when you preview, the shadows don't go outside of the line. I recorded the audio track first and dragged it into Open Tunes, so I could time the animations to the audio. The animations of the questions come up themselves, a simple animation effect using the Animate tool to slide them into place. I've added a transparency effect on the effect schematic for the three questions that appear, so they slowly appear as they slide in. And then the important part for today is the way I display the text to try and show it being typed on the mobile phone. So the first three lines I use a matte mask. They're shown here under A1, A2 and A3 for each of the lines. And that's simply the matte being moved over one character at a time using the animate tool in constant mode. And I'll do that for the first three lines, as you can see here. And then the fourth line, you can see in this column, I use the same method that I demonstrated last week, where I added the one line and then deleted one character at a time in reverse. So that when you play it forwards, you see one character being added. And both techniques had the benefits. It was probably easier to use the mask to reveal one letter at a time for the first three lines here, than it was to delete a letter at a time for the final line. But then when I first played them, they were playing too fast, so I had to change the spacing. And that was much more difficult to move the keys and the mask layers than it was to extend the frames in the level where I deleted the characters. So each technique has its own benefit, and I'm sure you'll figure out which one works for you. And finally for the character, I added a mask to animate the head. So here you see some simple animations that I used just to animate the head. And I don't want to go into any more detail about this project at the minute, but what I will do is I'll zip up this project with all five scenes in it so you can take a look at them yourself. And you'll find the link to that in the description below. And that's it for today. And I'll be back next week with another video, so why not join me then? And remember, if you've got any questions or comments about this, or have requests for other effects and future tutorials, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. But that's a few more easy ways to add a typewriter style effect when showing your text. So why not give it a go yourself and add some style to your text? Now that's a guarantee.